Hey everybody, this is Noah from Hacking Hollywood. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little different. We're gonna be looking at the differences between a traditional symbol, which has about 130 decibels, and then a uh, low volume symbol. And this one is from a new manufacturer. It doesn't have many reviews, it doesn't have any video reviews, and so we're gonna be the first ones, so let's take a look. So this is labeled as a low volume quiet crash symbol. So we have several different sizes. There's a 16, an 18, and then we have hi-hats, which are the 14 inch. We're gonna directly compare all of this to the Zildjian L80 quiet symbols, which boasts a reduction of up to 80% of the sound volume. Now, if you're like me, I actually don't need a full 80% reduction, and this is great for my home practice kit, but sometimes we play acoustic sets or even in a small environment where there's 15 or less people and we don't need a full range of cymbal sounds, so going to a reduced volume could be super helpful. It does come in a black or silver options. They sent me the black ones for this review and I'm super excited to hear what they sound like. These low volume cymbals are real cymbals that play or reduce volume up to 80% less volume thanks to their unique perforated pattern. This means you can play them exactly how you would play any other cymbal using any stick, mallet, or technique. The full decay is there and they respond to every playing nuance. Many drummers use knucklehead ink low volume cymbals with their acoustic kits for reduced volume in pit work or worship bands. And of course, they're the obvious solution for quiet rehearsals, late night practice at home. Get real cymbal feel and sound at reduced volume with low volume cymbals. Okay folks, so here we have it. We have the Zildjian L80 cymbal pack. This is the 18 inch crash ride. This is the 16 inch crash. And then we have a hi-hat. So I play open-handed, so that might look a little funky to you. Uh, but I am not a regular drummer anymore. I uh, do videos and that kind of stuff for a living. So I do want to point out, I am also using the Remo Silent Stroke Heads. So these will also be reduced in volume. So let me just give you a little bit of baseline of what this level would be like um, from my microphone, which is only about four or five feet away, okay? So it's not an amazing set, it's just a little practice set, but hey, it gets the job done. Uh, the volume is reduced, and I am talking a little bit loud just to project and make sure that you can hear me in the microphone from the distance. I'm gonna go ahead and try to talk at the same level and play to you now so you can hear what that sounds like. So you'll already notice that compared to a normal drum set, this is much quieter, right? The volume is reduced. And it's really hard to talk and play at the same time as you can tell, but but hopefully you'll get it just. So well, hopefully you'll get the gist of how this works. So if you really wanted to, you can warm this up and really start playing. That way you can. So that's one of the nice things with these L80s is you can kind of hit them a little bit harder, and that will start to build up the sound. So you still have a little bit of dynamics in there if you really want to play louder. Now, why am I pointing all this out before we introduce these other symbols? Well, for me, there's really two reasons to have these symbols. One is practicing at home. Um, I can be at my house without disturbing my neighbors and other people. I can be playing these drums um, and really not affect anybody. So the second scenario would be with a smaller venue or a youth band scenario, right? For uh, students or churches that have a small gathering with a group of people and you don't need that full volume of sound. We'll talk about another trick that I learned that might help you if you're in this scenario and you want to create a low volume drum sound. So without further ado, I'm gonna slap on the other cymbals so that you can hear what the Knucklehead Incorporated cymbals sound like. Let's do it. Okay, so we are back. We have all of the cymbals set up now. The 18 inch ride crash, the 16 inch crash, and the hi-hats. So let's just go ahead and listen to this for a minute and compare it directly with the L80s.
Okay, so right away, uh, these are significantly louder, but not as loud as the traditional cymbals. So these kind of meet in the middle. They are still reduced, but um, as you can tell, they ha actually have really good tone. I love the way the crash and the ride sound. The hi-hat isn't my favorite, to be honest with you. Uh, it gets the job done, but uh, towards the end of the video, I'm gonna experiment with having uh, the bottom be one of these and the top be an L80 to see if I like that sound as well. But yeah, so let's go ahead and have the same kind of talk play thing I was just doing with the L80s to see if that helps. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk and play at the same time to see if that helps us. Yeah, so they are significantly louder, so you can kind of hear the difference between the two. Okay, so once again, we have the traditional symbol, we have the knucklehead symbol, and then we have the Zildjian. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit each one and then compare the different levels um, to see how loud each one is, so. So it is a pretty significant difference. This cymbal is easily four times, to my human ear, four times as loud as this cymbal, the knucklehead cymbal. And then the Zildjian is probably half as loud as this one, so. It is quite the difference to hear uh, each one of these cymbals at the different levels. So I'm gonna play a little beat here and then crash on these different ones. This is gonna sound crazy when you hear uh, the symbol that blends with the hi-hat and then the symbol that uh, is quieter than the hi-hat and then obviously the traditional symbol here. So here we go. So that's pretty obvious, uh, the difference in volume between each one of these cymbals. So let's go ahead and directly compare the 16 inch of the Zildjian versus the 16 inch of the Knucklehead. So right away, uh, the attack on the knucklehead is very strong. If you like the look of the black head, uh, of the black symbols, that's something to take into account because these do look pretty sweet. Now it does have a little bit more volume, so that could be helpful if you are playing in an acoustic style at a bar or a small venue, because you do have a little bit more than the L80s. But at the same time, you can kind of warm the L80s out by giving it a little bit more punch and a little bit more style, so. So the next thing we're gonna compare are the 18 inch crash rides between the two to see what the different sounds between them. Okay, and so let's see if we can get that same technique on the knucklehead.
So significantly more volume from the knucklehead, of course, like we talked about earlier. I do like the bell a little bit better on the Zildjian 80 compared to the bell on the knucklehead. It's just a little bit easier to get to hit, uh, whereas the, uh, the knucklehead's a little bit smaller of a bell and it's not as pronounced as I hit it. I do like the tonality better overall from the knucklehead um, and this symbol as well. So that's your comparison between this, the 18 inches. Now let's look a little closer at the hi-hats. There you have it, you can hear the difference between the two symbols. I am gonna go ahead and do something I have been wanting to try. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the bottom symbol with the knucklehead, just to see how that sounds between the two. So do keep in mind, you do have one kind of limitation on this kind of setup. If you do a rim shot, it is gonna substantially stick out and create a lot of volume, a lot of noise. And for this kind of setup, it doesn't really work that well. As far as these Remo heads go, um, I have to say they, they really do match the L80s quite nicely. As far as volume and attack goes, because these knuckleheads do produce a little bit more sound, there is a couple tricks that we could do to increase the volume of the silent stroke heads. So we're gonna go ahead and do some experiments now to try to play with this to see uh, what kind of setups we can get. You'll see right away uh, on my reverse camera here, I do have some tape on these heads and this is to uh, add a little bit back to these mesh heads because they're kind of quiet on their own. I do have the original um, drum head on the back side of it. So just keep that in mind. That's where most of the sound's coming from. <laughs> and you'll notice that this tape is getting kind of old. So you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and replace this tape and uh, try a couple different configurations here. So I put two pieces of tape in an X pattern. One of them is mostly off at this point, but. I did two this like a little like a oh, note higher. But you do have a significant volume increase with the tape underneath. Um, this is a really cheap gaff tape or paper tape even. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try some blue tape that you would get at Home Depot, that's pretty normal. And then there is gaff tape, which is like 20 bucks a roll. So let's do the same kind of thing. Um, I did the X pattern here and it looks like, again, one of the two sides fell off. So I'm gonna make sure that that's applied a little stronger. I might even try to do a box to see if that makes any difference. Um, Cause if I do the box, I usually play towards the center of the snare uh, and maybe it'll stay on there a little longer in a box formation. So, all right, let's keep trying. Okay, this iteration is much better. It is a little louder because there is more tape. So that did make a difference. I did stretch the tape to the very edges so it would actually hold in the frame. So I think the final form is gonna be some gaff tape because I know it'll hold the best. And I'm gonna go just straight across the top and straight across the bottom to see if that is enough to make the sound. So let me show you what this sounds like. Again, it is a little louder. Definitely gonna add it to the kick of the toms. So you can hear even this one piece of tape does make a quite significant difference here. But that, with all this tape, definitely makes it sound loud, so.
Yeah, so it is significantly louder. It does match these symbols much, much better. So I do like that. Let's try the final implementation. I'm gonna go ahead and do a single stripe across everything, just like we talked about to see how that sounds. Okay, friends, so I just spent a good chunk of time. I got two stripes on the floor tom and the snare, and I got a single stripe on the two high toms. And then on the kick drum, I have a full quad or four. So the one thing I'll point out right away, um, you do have a little bit more of a front attack, uh, and it sounds like, a t -t -t like almost like there's a little bit of a snare on each one of these. Let me show you what it sounds like. It's almost like thrashy a little bit. That front end timbre that you have a little bit of a the high end hit or attack on it. So, so the goal is accomplished that we do get the volume up, but it does create that extra little bit of, of sound that's added to the drum. So um, that may or may not offend you. I mean, when you're playing with a band or playing with a group, um, you got to make some compromises. So hopefully this is a good middle road. Um, I I don't know. We'll see what it sounds like when we start playing with groups of people again. <laughs> So again, it doesn't sound horrible. It's not the best sounding thing in the world. It obviously doesn't match a traditional drum set, but hey, that's not the goal um, because you also don't replace the volume of the drum set, which is the whole help, hope of these quieter cymbals to help kind of blend in with a quieter atmosphere. So. A little out of practice, so sorry about that. But hey, hopefully this video will help you better determine whether these knucklehead symbols fit your needs. Um, I do like that we get a little bit more vol volume out of these than the L80s. Again, I do like the crash and the ride sound better than the L80s because they don't really produce any sort of volume. But um, as far as the hi-hats go, I don't really like the sound of those. So, hey, thanks for watching this one. Again, my name is Noah. I'm from Hacking Hollywood. We take the tricks from Hollywood and apply them to smaller productions. So this video is a little bit outside of my wheelhouse, but hey, um, a lot of people in the film industry love music. So I was happy to do this review on these symbols. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.